Welcome to today's episode. This is a really exciting one. We are at the Seawind factory in Ho Chi Minh and today Shane is taking us through the deck moulds and the hull moulds, which is what you can see behind me. This is actually hull number three that you can see right behind me. And in a moment, Shane is going to take us through exactly what it is that we're looking at right now. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you are enjoying this kind of content. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's get going. All right, so we are in the new factory, the new Seaman factory. Um, I'm wearing a little mic because there's a lot of background noise, so hopefully you can hear us okay. Shane is going to take us through um, some of the molding, the hull mold and the duck deck mold um, for the Seaman 1370. And we're going to start with, um, what is this, Shane? What am I looking at? This is the main bulkhead. So this is the main bulkhead for hull number three. We've just infused hull number three. This is one of the next components that's required to keep that, that moving along. So you can see it's made in one piece. Um, we actually make it on a, we have a, a large lamination table that we make uh, a lot of our bulkheads on. We have inserts on that table for things like the door frame surround. So you can see you've got this built in uh, structure around the cutouts. Um, so it's actually laid up on a flat table, but then you can see, so this is the high size. So you can see uh, some of this, this the uh, additional reinforcement yeah. breaking through, whereas the other side's flat. Um, what you can see here is all full carbon fiber foam cord bulkhead, and then you can see a lot of the unidirectional reinforcements. So you've got running where all these lumps are. So you've got unidirectionals running here, you've got diagonals running here. So what that does is you're optimizing the load path. So you've got your nominal laminate across everything, and then where the loads transfer into the hull, into the deck, we've got direct paths uh, of of high uh, load reinforcement through there. So how heavy is this uh, it's, it's about 180 kilos. Yep. Is, okay, so if question. It, is that light for a massive bulkhead? Yeah, so if yeah. this was fiberglass, um, it would probably be about a third heavier. So we'd probably be looking about 220 if okay. this was fiberglass. Yep. And it's standard, it comes standard as a carbon fiber. Yeah, so this is yep. the standard bulkhead. Yeah, yep. so everyone gets the carbon yep. fiber bulkhead. Okay, cool. So what's behind us? So this is the deck mold. We outsource the production of the hull and deck mold to be five axis CNC machines. So that really enables us to get some high, um, a lot of accuracy and a lot of, a lot of detail. Because of the way we've designed the, the deck for the 1370, um, the mold doesn't actually include the coach roof. So on our, on our uh, other models, they all include the coach roof into the deck. Mm. In the 1370, we've included the saloon into the deck and then we have a separate coach roof that goes on top. Um, what that does mean is a lot of extra detail in this part. So this part includes a lot of the boat. So it's, it, it has taken a bit of time to get that complete. It's just, just arrived, just landed last week. Um, so we've just started waxing. And as soon as we get back from our factory shutdown, we're going to spray uh, a blow coat. Uh, and what that is, is it's a coat of gel coat um, that gets sprayed and then the next day, we come and blow it off. So we get an air blower and we, we chip up the edges and we blow it off. And we just make sure that everything releases. There's no bits that stick. Right. Because you know, to find a small patch like this that's stuck with gel coat now, we can fix that. If we find that when we've made the deck, it won't demold and we have big problems. So you do that blow coat, um, check that everything releases, everything's been waxed properly. Uh, and then we're, now we're ready to start series production. As soon as that blow coat comes off, we spray another gel coat that stays. That's the gel yep. coat for deck number one, yep. we do our tie layer and then we start laying up our infusion laminate. Make sure we're here to film that, that'll be really interesting. So here we have the hull mold um, and you can see we've got a split down the center line. So the hull mold in uh, three major pieces and there's actually, this is uh, this part here somewhere. It has a join, it's removable. <laughs> wow, it's a very fine join, wherever it is. There's a join here, um, so the bow is removable. That's because of this reverse bow shape. So we have to have that, that inboard part removable so we can demold. And obviously you can see it wraps across the top there, so it has yep. to come off. So we've just infused the hull for uh, number three. This is this one, and it's the center hull. And the next step is to infuse the top side. So the top side sitting outboard here, that'll get rolled over, gel coated uh, and infused, and then put back up and slid together. And you've got these locating sockets here that the uh, outboard side will lock into to locate it. And you can see we've removed the laminate. So this has just the single layer of laminate in the center line. 
So once we put that together, then we finish off all yeah. the extra layers. Yeah. So it's got a, an overlap that's about, say, 300 mil wide. Yep, okay. So th this is the hull of hull number three. This is the hull. This is yep. the actual yep. hull. So you've yep. got your everything on here. You've got your gel coat, yep. your outer laminate, your, your foam core, and yep. your inner laminate. Yep. And that's all been infused in one hit. So all, all of that, stringers, the carbon reinforcement, foam core, everything. And, and how long does that take you? Or take the team? Um, so the full process, at the moment, it's taking about three weeks for yep. centre hull and top sides. Okay. Um, and to get to our production rate, we need to get it down to about two weeks okay. for, the, for that stage. Okay. So this is our new home. We literally moved in like two days ago, so we're still in the midst of getting everything set up. But uh, I'll give you a very quick tour, it won't take long because it's just a small two bedroom apartment. But behind me we've got our little kitchen, pretty basic, but that's all we need. And we've also got uh, just a little living area. It's there. We've got two bedrooms, one bedroom is um, just an empty room but it has a little working space set up, which we may or may not use, and it's got like loads of storage. So we're storing all of our stuff in there, which is nice. And then we also have our room, our bedroom, which is a nice cozy bed, nice big window. And we also have two bathrooms, which is probably one bathroom too many. Just all my potions and serums to try and make myself look good and the world's smallest bath and then in the other bathroom we have what do we have oh we have a shower we're feeling really excited that we've got our own place now and it's a really nice building um the management is you know really friendly and helpful and there's a beautiful rooftop area like a pool and like a lounge area which is just gorgeous beautiful views a gym really good gym which is one in my gym clothes i'm looking a bit sweaty and yeah we're happy you know we're feeling like we're finally settling in in Ho Chi Minh, right? Yeah. This is uh, where we live. We have on the left our little fruit vendors and they tend to set up at about four o'clock in the afternoon. The area is also pretty cool. There's loads of like really nice restaurants, both Vietnamese and otherwise, whether it's street food, the guy there that, that cleans out your ears. So there's barbers by the side of the road. It's kind of the real hub bar of like just life in Vietnam. You can buy almost anything here. The driving is insane, and I really should be paying far more attention to what I'm doing than, than actually driving a bike. Very complacent. So yeah, this is kind of like the main drag strip in Tao Dien. There are the fruit stalls at the moment. Dragon fruit is in season. So I got some really nice red dragon fruits. It's going at about, um, it's going at 10,000 dong a kilo which is about um, 30 pence, about 50 cents a kilo. It's like super cheap dragon fruit. And then there's the flower sellers. It's kind of, yeah, it's a real... It's a neighborhood vibe. Yeah, there's a really good vibe here. We're really happy here. Um, everyone is super friendly. And then there's a whole mix of food from um, the little seafood stalls at the side of the road where you can have, you know, a meal for two with beer, with some of the best seafood you're ever gonna have for, I don't know, six or seven bucks. So more upmarket restaurants where you'll pay like European prices for the food. It's all, it's all pretty amazing. Therese, where are we going, babe? Lights do not do us any favors. Yeah. 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 Yeah
is our favourite bar. This is where we come every evening to, uh, not every evening, every evening? Most evenings, I must admit, we do come out most evenings and have a little drink. We are in our new apartment and uh, we literally have just moved in so we still need to get a few bits and pieces um, for the apartment to make it nice and cosy and homely. The last time we said the word homely we got in trouble because for the North World, for the Americans, homely means plain looking or ugly and for I think most other English speaking countries homely means home like. So anyway, I'm using the word homely to mean home-like because that's how we say it in Australia, or at least I think it is. We found this um, shop on the side of a main road and uh, we came to have a little look and see what cool things they have that we can buy to decorate the place. So we're going to go. We're going to be here for six months. Yeah, we're going to be here for a while, so we need to make the place feel like And I have a minor obsession with table lamps. We're going to take our bike and ride um, to the shop and you're going to come with us, so... I'm going to show you the chaos of driving a moped in Ho Chi Minh City. I've seen these like here in Ikea or, where, or Kmart or wherever and um, you know they cost about $50 and here they're about $10, $10 to $15 depending on which one you're getting and you know she might be raising the prices a little for us but that's okay. I love this shop, get a house to decorate boho style, this is definitely, definitely the shop for you. So we ended up buying quite a few things from that really cool uh, like rattan shop. I couldn't film us like carrying it all back because I did it like full beat me style where we had all these things hanging off the back of the motorcycle and I did not have a hand free to hold my camera. We ended up grabbing a couple of lamps and a couple of woven baskets that we're using for kind of just storage. We also bought a couple of these like bigger basket things that we have overturned and we're using those like little side tables. The apartment's starting to feel nice and homely. We're feeling really kind of happy and settled now and you know it's starting to feel a little bit more like almost like home. Not quite home, it's our temporary home but you know our permanent home is being built literally as we speak um, so you know that's that's really, really exciting. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed setting up our apartment with us and uh, kind of coming along with some of our non-factory based adventures. We will see you again next week with a new episode. Next week, we are um, going through a really interesting question, I think. I think it's really interesting. I hope you guys think so as well, where we talk about what would happen, worst case scenario, and this is like the stuff of nightmares. I literally lose sleep over this stuff. If in our new catamaran, River Rose 2, we hit like a shipping container, you know, we, we breach the hull um, in some way, and what would happen? What are the safety features of the hull design and the entire boat design that would kind of come into play in that situation? So we'll see you next week with that episode. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below, give this video a thumbs up, and uh, stay well, stay happy, stay safe, and um, we'll see you next week.